Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to my channel, Phillips in the Philippines. My name's Austin. I'm 28 years old from Chicago in the USA. My wife's name is Raquel. She's 23 years old. She lives in Boracay Island. Um, if you've seen our last video, we just recently got engaged and married in the Philippines. Um, I spent three weeks over there uh, at the end of January um, where I surprised Raquel by showing up a few days early, surprised her the next day by proposing to her um, in front of her family, and then uh, spent some time in Boracay before we had a civil wedding uh, in, the, in the province where Raquel's from. So kind of the goal of this channel is just to serve as a log for our memories uh, from, from the time that we met uh, throughout our long distance relationship. And also to serve as a guide for those who are in a similar situation, uh, either foreigners with, with uh, significant others in the Philippines or anywhere else abroad, um, and share some of the challenges and the, and the experiences that you have dating someone from a long distance. Um, we also want to serve as a guide for some processes like you know when I first started out I really used YouTube and the, a lot of the vlogs that I found as resources you know for how to travel to the Philippines uh, what to bring on trips to the Philippines where where to go um, you know the process for having a civil wedding uh, in the Philippines as well as the immigration process to bring your wife or fiance back to the United States so Raquel and I first met uh, on an app called Filipina Cupid. Um, I was at the airport actually in Chicago on my way to a job interview uh, in California. And I had just gotten the app. Um, you know, based on my previous experience when I went on the trip to the Philippines, I, I you know, I, I fell in love with the people there. And I just wanted to give it a shot, you know. I said, what the heck, maybe I can meet somebody online. Um, from what I've heard from Raquel, she was only on the app for like 20 minutes. Uh, she, a cousin of hers had told her about it and they were just messing around and within about 20 minutes of her being on the app, we matched. So I'm sitting there, just matched with this beautiful girl and there's about five minutes until I board this plane and lose cell service. Um, so I'm rushing through the app, you know, trying to contact her and, and, and the reason most people uh, say that they don't recommend using uh, Filipina Cupid is because one, there's a lot of fake scamming accounts on there. Um, but two, the messaging on there, without if you don't pay for the paid version of the app, you can only see like the first three or four characters of a message that somebody sends you. Um, so I'm frantically uh, messaging this girl, you know, W-H-A-T-S-A-P-P, -P, like all in separate messages, asking if she has WhatsApp, in which she says no. Um, just desperately looking for some other platform we can talk on. Uh, so then uh, she messages me again through cryptic three character messaging Facebook and so I'm like okay yeah we can connect with each other on Facebook and actually get to talk um, so then she's we go through the painstaking process of trying to send our names through each other full names Facebook names to each other and uh, right before the flight takes off I'm able to find her Facebook and add her um, and then it turns out, you know, during the flight, I didn't know that I had, I was able to use the plane's Wi-Fi for instant messengers. So we were able to text each other through a uh, Facebook messenger. And that's, that's kind of how we first connected. And so my, my little weekend trip out to California, um, quickly became fo more focused on, on getting to know this Filipina that I had met. So I knew pretty early on, you know, not to sound cliche, um, but when people say things like uh, love at first sight or when you meet the love of your life, you'll know. And there's some truth to that, you know, because, you know, I really, you know, every time someone meets someone for the first time, they get in this like puppy dog love stage, I think, um, which, you know, when you really have the love of your life, that feeling, I think, never fades away or continues to linger versus uh, if they're not the one for you, that feeling does sometimes fade away. Uh, but something with Raquel, um, it, it seemed very different. I just remember thinking to myself during that plane ride, uh, looking, you know, as I was chatting with her, like I could see this woman being, uh, becoming my wife. And that's really, you know, the first time I, I felt like that. Uh, like I said, I think when you date someone when you're younger and not really necessarily dating for the purpose of marriage at that time, or that's kind of like a future thought, uh, your views and what you look look for in someone are completely different than when you've you've experienced long relationships 
and you want to settle down, you, you kind of know exactly what you're looking for in someone uh, that you want to marry. Um, and, and Raquel was that person for me. Uh, so hours of talking turned into days of talking, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months. Uh, we would talk every day um, as much as we could with given the time difference. Um, I remember times she'd video call me, it'd be, f it'd be three or four in the morning Chicago time, but it would be the, the time that the sun was setting in Boracay Island over the beautiful turquoise water. And um, I remember it's like, you know, as much as I love my sleep, I would wake up for anything to be able to see that and enjoy those moments with her. So about a month after talking to each other and getting to know each other, I, I asked her to be my girlfriend, my long distance girlfriend. Um, and that's when our relationship really, really started to bloom. I planned a trip uh, to go visit Raquel for the first time. Um, I flew from Chicago to California, and then from California to Manila, and then from Manila to um, Calibo, uh, one of the bigger towns around where Raquel is from. Um, and that's where we met the first time, and I got to meet her family for the first time, and I was just completely blown away. Um, I was there for two weeks. We spent a week living uh, with her family in the province at her at her parents' house, um, and that was an amazing experience. I actually grew up in central Illinois um, in more of a rural farmland area, so being in the province and that that slower pace of life was perfect for me. Um, and it's just you know, I quickly saw you know just coming from from a city like Chicago, how fast pace life is here and then I was I was so enamored with how how slow the pace of life was living in the province and how how everyone just took the time to enjoy all the little things that we uh, take for granted here so I'm currently back in Chicago working uh, I have plans to go back and visit Raquel again in July um, I've already booked flights I'm gonna be traveling through Taiwan this time it's my first time making that trip so it's a direct flight from Chicago to Taiwan uh, I think a four hour layover, then a flight from Taiwan to uh, Manila, another little layover, and then from Manila to uh, Calibo. So I'd like to close the video with a little montage of the first time I went out to meet Raquel. For 29 and I find myself wondering, oh, what did happen to the last 10? Ran away with my life fast forward Never turn back again It's kind of funny that the more we pass time The more we need to set the rewind And 19 was the year I had to leave you But now I'm seeing all the signs Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true I'm just as surprised as you Is this
Thank you, everybody. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.